Problem 6. Determine the capacitance of a Teflon Teflon filled parallel plate capacitor. Hmm. Well, that's oddly specific. Having a plate area of this and a plate separation of that. Alright. So let's start writing up some formulas. So we know that our trusty capacitance or parallel plate capacitor is epsilon. What are you doing, mister? All right, hop, okay. Epsilon A over D, where we know specifically that this epsilon is not epsilon naught. It is epsilon naught times epsilon naught times epsilon R. Then we have area still over D. I think that's all the information that we need or that we have so yep we got an area and we have a distance got it okay so now the trick is going to be finding out what this epsilon r is hmm let's try capacitance first capacitance okay then right here we talk about relative static permittivity permittivity Oh, wow. I got <laughs> right after vacuum and air, I guess Teflon is the next most common? Or do they just go in order of smallest to highest? I think it's going in order. All right. So 2.1, I guess. 2.1. So this guy is 2.1, as opposed to 1, which we've been working with mostly. All right. I think it's all done except for the calculations now. All right. So, 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 for epsilon naught times 2.1 because Teflon multiplied by, come on, give it a square meters. Ah, centimeters squared. Okay. So, I'm just going to write over this guy. We have 100 or 10 squared centimeters per 1 meter. Square the top and the bottom. And this gives us 10 to the fourth. There we go. Times 2.05 divided by quantity, 10 to the fourth. And that's the conversion between centimeter squared and meter squared. And then we still need the distance, right? Divide by the distance. Yep. Which is 0 0.07 times 0 0.07 times 10 to the negative third. I guess they're trying to go for realistic numbers. All right, so we got epsilon naught, we have Teflon, we have area, and we have separation. Right. All right, so I'm good with this. So that's 54 picofarads. Okay. Believe. Possibly true. Yes. Okay, so now, what is this guy? There we go. Oh, go over, back to, there we go. Determine the maximum potential difference that can be applied to a Teflon filled parallel plate capacitor having a plate area of this and a separation of that. Hmm, okay. Hmm. Maximum potential difference. Hmm. All right, so we need to find out what we do for, I think, dielectric breakdown. So we want it in kilovolts. So I'm going to start by writing up. Um, so the only thing I really know that has voltage is oh, the capacitance equation. So then we know that voltage equals Q over C. And we know it's a parallel plate capacitor. So we're going to have Q, and then we're going to have epsilon 
not epsilon r times area divided by distance. And I wrote it upside down because it was on the bottom. Uh, when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so now what we need to do is find out actually that maximum. Hmm. Okay, so this is going to be for dielectric breakdown. Dielectric breakdown. Electrical breakdown? Okay, that works. And then strength, dielectric strength. This is what I'm looking for. So dielectric strength is the um, strength of a dielectric before dielectric breakdown occurs. Basically, um, if you remember the previous problem with like the lightning and the, um, the cloud, dielectric breakdown is when lightning occurs. So I think they mentioned Teflon. Teflon, they did. Let's go to Teflon. I'm going to pick, let's see here, PTFE, Teflon, I'm going to say 60. So 60 megavolts per meter. Hmm. So di what's the symbol for dielectric breakdown? Is there a symbol for that? Hmm. I don't even know if there is a symbol. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to go with 60 megavolts per meter. So if we look at this in terms of like a picture, whoop, here is one plate. Copy, paste. There we go. And I'm going to do copy, paste again. I'm going to put this guy in the middle. Make it look different color. Make it build. And we'll say blue. Assuming that Teflon is blue. So the idea here is once we get enough potential between the two, the, um, there will be an arc from one side to the other, which will then um, basically turn the dielectric in the middle from an insulator to a conductor. So all that really matters here is not how big each plate is, but how close they are to each other and what the uh, material is in the middle. So we know the material in the middle is 60 megavolts per meter, and we know the separation is 0 0.08 millimeters. So I'm going to do 0.08 millimeters, and I'm going to multiply that by 1,000 millimeters. That's terrible. That's okay. I'll get over it. Times one meter. And then meters cancel out, millimeters cancel out, and we are left with, we're we looking for megavolts here or kilovolts? Kilovolts. All right. And then mega is 10 to the sixth. So I'm going to do 10 to the sixth, no, 60 times 10 to the sixth times 0 0.08, 0 0.08 divided by 1,000. See what this gives us. And it gives us 4.8 kilovolts. Four point eight. Okay, so I guess my whole attempt there to use capacitance and charge and voltage was useless and dumb. Alright, so in the whole area, the plate area doesn't matter. Because all that matters is it's going to find the area between the two and the lightning is going to go through that. Kind of like, um, you know how when lightning strikes, it strikes like things that are tall, like uh, towers or buildings or that one guy that's playing golf because he happens to be the tallest thing on a very flat field. So the idea is if you have a imperfect capacitor plate like this, then it's going to use this distance right here to basically transfer all the charge as opposed to this area up here. So it doesn't really matter the how wide or how much area the capacitor is, all that matters is the distance between the two. And that's why this is megavolts per meter, where a meter is this distance. Okay. Looks pretty good. That's problem six. On to number seven.